But this was literally on my car like this. This is why you have to be careful. I don't really know what to do moving forward with this. But this definitely looks like a tracker to me. So this is so crazy, you guys. So crazy. Like, who would do this? It says so. Just 12 days later, Abigail was dead, shot and killed along a Texas highway. The bullet, fired from a deranged gunman, ended her life in a moment of terror and bloodshed. Little did she know, the obsession had begun to take root long before, in a strip club where she danced, where a stranger's gaze had lingered too long, where a seed of madness had been planted and allowed to flourish. The final countdown had begun. He wanted more than she was willing to give. The stalker's obsession had become an inescapable nightmare, leading to her ultimate demise. Within hours of her death, 54-year-old former US Marine Stanley Ziegler was in police custody and charged with her murder. The warning signs, it seems, had been there for some time. Before we start, if you find this video fascinating, then at the end, please drop it a like and let me know what you thought about the case. It helps the channel. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe for more. Thank you. Abigail's death was not just a senseless act of violence. It was a tragic culmination of a series of warning signs and missed opportunities. She had confided in those closest to her, expressing her fear and concern over the stalking and harassment she had been subjected to by a man known as Stan. Her manager at the strip club, Rick's Cabaret, had been made aware of the situation, as had her mother, but despite these red flags, no action was taken to protect her, despite the pleas from those who cared about her. As the investigation progressed, more damning evidence came to light. The discovery of a tracking device on her car provided a chilling insight into the extent of the lengths the stalker was willing to go to. And then there was Stan's own Instagram, filled with screen grabs from Abigail's account, rants about her and personal details, in which he claimed to have paid her thousands of dollars and accused her of being a street worker. The 22-year-old mother of one a young woman with her whole life ahead of her had feared for her safety, but her fears became a gruesome reality when her body was found behind the wheel of her car. On the evening of the 26th of October, she was a victim of a merciless killer, driven by an uncontrollable obsession. The gruesome scene unfolded near Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. Abigail's car careened off an exit ramp onto a grassy area. Police received a 911 call at around 8.40 p.m. from a witness. The caller said they approached the vehicle and saw bullet holes in the car's passenger side and the person inside it was not moving and unresponsive. The responding officers and emergency personnel declared her dead on the scene. Three shell casings and shattered glass lay scattered nearby. Officers noted that she was wearing the clothes of an exotic dancer. They found her passport in the car, which enabled them to easily identify her. And in sight of the crime scene, they could see a strip club, Rick's Cabaret. The officers decided to go and see if anyone there knew Abigail. They spoke to the manager, who told them that she did work there, but she had not been in that day. Once the manager was told about the crime, he immediately told them about a man he only knew as Stan, a retired army veteran. The manager told the officers how Abigail had been frightened, as Stan had been stalking and harassing her. He shown them the video where Abigail finds the tracker, and he makes them aware of Stan's Instagram account. The officers discovered that he had a history of making payments to Abigail through a mobile payment service, as stated in one of his Instagram posts. But more chilling was in the hours leading up to the murder, Stan had posted about paying Abigail $3,000, 
along with a menacing threat to expose her alleged involvement in street working. Stan's words painted a picture of a scorned man claiming that he had envisioned a future with Abigail, but feeling duped by her supposed lies and deceit. He even went so far as to call her part of a high-end street working ring. I never thought I'd be one of those guys taken advantage of. Sharing for awareness, Abigail S and I, since July 2021, have been enjoying each other's company. She's so beautiful and personable that I envisioned a future with her, but dealing with all the lies is overwhelming. I realise that's part of your primary job as an adult entertainer. Stan continued, If you only leave your second job, being in a high-end street working ring, we could move forward. Yes, this pays $2,000 per session, but it's illegal. And having a boyfriend whilst having intimacy with other men? There was more on the Instagram account. He shown further payments that he had sent to Abigail and RCI Dining which was Rick's cabaret. He stated all these payments were for physical intimacy. He told other men to be cognizant with these clubs and warned about damage to bank accounts. He started screen grabbing posts Abigail had liked and passing judgment on them. With this one, he says, damn Abby, I thought it was family first. But let's think back to what this actually is. This is a man who was a customer at a strip club, who was allegedly paying for extra sessions of some kind. What is clear from the payment is that it was an arranged agreement and a service. But somewhere along the line, Stan either forgot this or was not emotionally capable of dealing with this. I found that Stan had made a second profile where he posted this. It shows that maybe Abigail was giving him some kind of girlfriend experience. And although he was paying for it, he was just that pathetic that he thought it all was genuine. Made it babe, tonight was amazing. Wish I could have stayed. Glad you're home safe, you are amazing. Likewise babe, I hope I can see you next Friday. You can. Did I leave my key fob there? Let me check. Okay, it's a black key fob with three grey buttons and a red one. I found it babe, lol sorry, but thank you. I had a good time, and I definitely can't wait to see you again. Yeah, see you again ASAP, be safe. And I think around here, there's a bit of time, and then he messages again. I could seriously spend hours between your legs. You are so perfect, both personality and physically. Baby, you are unbelievable. You had me going crazy. It's just a fantasy, and on the same day, on the same account, he posted this. He's clearly hid parts to make himself look better. You actually thought I liked you? I never liked you. You're a trick to everyone. Leave me alone. If you're not going to pay me, then we have nothing to talk about. So I don't care what you post about me. Then I'm assuming some time had passed and she said this. If you want to come back to Rick's, I will have to talk to the managers for you, but you have to bring 3K for me. You just admitted to being a street worker. Trick, any man who lets a woman use him for his wallet. So she is clearly stating that this is a business. And I'm sure in that game, you get the odd pathetic male who cannot emotionally deal with it. He commented saying, a woman who can be bought isn't worth having. Okay Stan, so this is where you feel scorned, lied to, cheated, but you just leave it. If you don't think she's worth having, then why are you carrying this on? Back on his main profile, just a few days later, he posted this. He commented, OMG, nice rack. I am assuming he means OMG, but this is what is terrifying to me. He is clearly unhinged. One minute he hates her, then he's admiring her, but he can't get over his lust for her. Even though he paid, he was probably so full of pride that a woman like her would look at him. He has probably been a very small man all his life. The police hunted down the suspect. They learned Stan owned a red Ford pickup truck. Little did they know, it was the same vehicle captured by CCTV footage, following her every move just 17 minutes before the brutal murder. The surveillance footage revealed more sinister activities. 
the same truck was spotted in the same location near Abigail's home on at least five other occasions in the days leading up to her murder. A clear indication of the perpetrator's fixation and the escalation of his sinister intentions. It was clear that in those final few days leading up to her death, the stalker had reached new levels of obsession. Stan's truck was first spotted on October 13th, and then again on the 23rd and 24th. But on October 25th, the day before her death, the horror reached new heights, as his vehicle was observed prowling outside her home twice, at 1.30pm and 3pm. Stan was apprehended the following day, but only after he attempted to evade arrest. He had agreed to hand himself in, but on the day he did not show up and claimed a family member had passed away. He then barricaded himself in his own home and a SWAT team had to force their way in. They found him on the balcony with deep self-inflicted wounds to his neck and face. He was playing the victim, claiming he had been cheated and robbed. He was rushed to the hospital for treatment before being taken to the police station for interrogation. In the days leading up to her untimely death, Abigail made the haunting discovery of the tracking device planted on her car. In a video posted online, she holds the device up close to the camera and said, this was literally on my car like this. This is why you have to be careful. I don't know what to do moving forward with this, but it definitely looks like a tracker to me. Check under your cars, ladies. Interestingly though, she says this, this is so crazy, you guys. So crazy. Like, who would do this? I find this interesting, because maybe she didn't see Stan as a serious threat. Maybe she was used to dealing with people like him. Or maybe she was just in denial for the video. It just felt like an out-of-place comment to me. The night before this video was recorded, Stan's truck was seen on surveillance footage, slowly and stealthily cruising by her home for the first time. Abigail's mother had pleaded with her to go to the police after she found the tracking device. But for some reason, Abigail thought it was best not to, or at least not then. Abigail's mother said, he took her away from me, and I'm gonna make sure every time he has a court date, he will see my face there. He's gonna see that Abby was never alone. The young mother, Abigail, had aspirations and dreams. She had trained to become a brow artist and had created a social media account for her business. Her mother, Jessica Contreras, described her as a great person and a hard worker and someone with a lot of love. But those qualities were tragically taken away from her and all those who knew her. Now, her loved ones are left to grieve the loss of a vibrant life, a young mother and a friend. They are left to face the fact that her son will grow up without his mother and will never know the love and care that his mother could provide. The tragedy of Abigail's death is a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the unfairness of a loss that is so sudden and so senseless. It leaves a gaping hole in the lives of those who knew and loved her. A loss that will forever be felt and remembered with sadness. Stan Ziegler remains in prison awaiting trial. I think this case should be a warning to others that if people like Stan are allowed to continue their obsession, it can have deadly consequences. If Abigail had reported this to the police, maybe we could have had a different outcome. Tragic. That's all we got time for in this episode. Until next time, stay sane.